How's it going? It's time for BH oh no free part dose. This time I'm going to use the version that has solid state relays. That's cool. But more importantly, I'm going to replace the firmware that it comes with, with an ESP home sketch. And I'm going to add a temperature sensor. It'll be fun. Step one, fire up the BH on Ofree. Find the access point that it creates, connect to it, put in easy IOT at for the password, and then put in your Wi-Fi SSID and password for your house. Once it's connected to your network, we can get on to the fun stuff. So I've got the BH on Ofree connected to my network. Now what I want to do is create the ESP home YAML file that will line up all the right pins to all the right functions so that I can upload it onto the BH on Ofree and have it work like I want it to. So on the left is the BH on Ofree web interface and on the right is where I will do my ESP home work. <laughs> so we're going to create a new device. That's where this is going to go. Next, what type of device? Good question. I'm going to leave it as generic ESP8266. I tried doing the secrets at this stage and it doesn't work. So you have to put your real Wi-Fi ID and password in. If somebody knows different than that, let me know. Now it's going to create a generic uh, YAML file. And if you had it connected to your PC where you have Home Assistant, you could select it from up here. I do not. So I've got to go down here and uh, compile it to upload it, but I'm not going to quite do that yet. So here we go. Now I can put in the secret here instead. All right. Now we can start putting together the meat of this ESP home YAML file. On the left now, what I have is the full example of uh, the Sonoff 4 channel. And it's going to be pretty similar in the way that we set up this BH on Ofree. So for each uh, relay, we want a switch. So I'm going to grab, since we're using four and five, well, I'm going to grab all this and copy it over here. Now I'm not going to use this one. And I'm going to change the name. We're going to just call this BH Relay one and we're going to call this bh relay two make sure our ids are correct we are going to need these ids those are important so we can link this switch action i want to make sure that i've got the right relay assigned so oh, and actually i did it wrong gpio4 goes to relay one so i'm going to set that to one and it's got that little red x because it's like hey you define two of the same thing can't do that buddy so now we've got Relay 1 is GPIO 4 and Relay 2 is GPIO 5 and that's what they have configured. That's the way the BH on Ofri is wired. So I can't change that. That's the way it's got to be. Now I can go back to my example and I'm going to copy a couple of these binary sensors. This is the buttons. The buttons that you press to make the relays toggle. And now let's go through it. Okay, let's Go back to the BH on Ofri thing. We're going to use GPIO 12 and 13. So let's make this one 12 and this one 13. And this is going to be, I'm going to call it what it will actually be. It's actually going to be controlling the main bathroom light on press. When we press that button, we want it to trigger relay one, right? They've got GPIO up here and it's triggering relay one. This is important too, that it is set as in pull up. And this actually does the same thing. You can see it here, pull up SIM, SIM is yes in Portuguese. So that's doing the same thing as this. Now GPIO 13, main bathroom fan, and it's gonna control relay two, which is GPIO five. Yes, that's it. That gives us the basic functionality. That will do what the BH on Ofri is set up to do by default. You press a button that's connected to GPIO 12, and it's going to trigger uh, relay number one, which is connected to GPIO 4. 
Same with 13. If there's a button on 13, you press it, it's going to toggle uh, the relay that's connected to GPIO 5. But that's not all we want to do, right? We want to connect a couple other things to this. Uh, I really want to connect a motion sensor and a temperature sensor. I think I can do it? <laughs> yes, yes I can. But first we'll save it, close it, validate it. Okay, it's valid. Now let's compile it. Compile. Because BH Onofre already has a method for us to be able to upload new firmware, we don't need to connect this to a serial adapter. That is, you don't need ESP Home Flasher or Flash Easy. You don't need a USB to serial adapter. It's already ready to go over the air, just like Tasmoda right here. Once this is done compiling, we'll be able to upload it through that. There we go. Compiled program. Now we'll download the binary. Now we can go here, find the bin for main bathroom bin. There it is. Open. I'm assuming this means change. <laughs> Carregar firmware. We're going to change the firmware. Oh, look, it's working. Main bathroom popped up right here. So it's no longer using the BHO no free firmware. It's now using ESP home. That was easy. Now let's add the other fun stuff. Now I'm going to do a little more copying. <laughs> I've already got this uh, motion sensor set up in my garage YAML. So I'm going to just copy that. So I'm going to add another binary sensor. All right. Uh, let's see. I can still use GPIO2 main bathroom motion. Great. And this will be a good way to turn it off if nobody's in there or turn it on when somebody is in there. Bathrooms are a little tricky for turning the lights off if nobody's moving. Because sometimes you just sit and nothing's moving. <laughs> we'll do that for the motion detector. And then the other part is the first part of setting up a Dallas temperature sensor. And to do that, the first thing you do is this part here. You just set up which pin you're going to use. And that'll work. Let's close that and validate. It's valid. So now we upload. More finger crossing. <laughs> A lot of finger crossing going on. Now when it's done updating, one of the things that will stand out to you is that there's no Dallas sensors found. And that's because I haven't actually connected it yet. So I need to connect the Dallas sensor, I need to connect the motion sensor, and I need to connect two push buttons. Here I have all the parts that I'm going to put together. This is my BH on free. This one is actually the one that's got the solid state relays. So that's cool. So when you click them on and off, they don't click. <laughs> they don't make any sound at all. I've got here two of these really cheap but very effective touch sensors. So those are going to be my buttons. If these have a downside, it's that they are too sensitive. Sometimes if you're just too close to a piece of wood, it will activate. So uh, you got to be a little bit mindful of that when you're using these. But overall, they're great. I can't remember what they cost a piece, but it's something like 10 cents, maybe less a piece. You buy them in a big sheet. They're great. And then this is the microwave motion sensor. And then this is my Dallas temperature sensor. Um, this one's actually waterproof. One of the things to love about the BH Ono Free is that it, you've got access to all these pins uh, with headers ready to go. So, so here it is, all the components that I want connected to this Portuguese beauty, all wired up and ready to go. Two capacitive touch buttons, one for each relay, microwave motion detector, and the Dallas temperature sensor. I found when I have a bunch of sensors like this, the easy thing to do is to cut a bunch of jumpers and tie the voltage wires together and the ground wires together. That way I only have to go to one pin on the control board with power and ground. And then each of these sensors just sends their data signal back to the board. Let's power it back up, make sure everything's working. So to actually see if everything's working, I need to integrate them into Home Assistant. First I'll go here to ESP Home real quick and just make sure that it's online and it is. Now we're going to go to configuration, integrations, and here's some new stuff to configure. Do I want to add it? Yes. I don't know why it's there twice, but I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to say thank you. Now in the states page, 
I'm going to look for anything that says main bathroom. And here we have everything. I forgot something when you use these Dallas temperature sensors. You need to have a resistor, something around 4.7K, between the data pin and 3.3 volts. So now we have that. We can go to ESP Home. Now in the logs here, we should get the address for the Dallas temperature sensor. And there it is. So you want to grab that and copy it. And now we need to make a new sensor. So the Dallas temperature sensors, there's two parts to setting them up. The first is you connect the sensor, you tell it which pin with this Dallas heading, and you connect the resistor powered up, look at the logs, it'll show you the address. Then you have to go back to the YAML and put in that address. All right. Now while I'm here, I'm also going to fix something that I messed up a little bit. I changed the names of these switches. The switch here is really a relay and the binary sensor is just the button. So the button, in this case it's a capacitive touch button, it can go on and off. In fact, every time you touch it, it's going to go on and off. But I want the relay to go on when it's touched and to go off the next time it's touched. I changed the name here so that I could see this entity in the states page and then be able to see the actual state of the lights and the fan and then I changed the name down here to represent that these are just the buttons that the binary sensor state is not really reflecting the state of the light or the state of the fan I tried really hard to make that as confusing as possible you're welcome so we save it and we validate it and we upload it it almost always does this failure to connect and then it connects all of them do that, it seems like, but whatever. Now that I know it's back up, now we can go back to the states page and we can get a look at all of our sensors and such here. You can see the motion detector going on and off. Uh, the temperature sensor is here. Unit of measurement is already in Fahrenheit. That's very nice. So here you see the binary sensor state and here you see the relay state. Remember again, the binary sensor is just the button and the switch is actually the state of the relay. When I touch one, it goes to off, and when I release it is when it changes the state. And it doesn't matter what the state of the button is, so the state of the button is not going to match the state of the relay. But it's doing what I want. I think the motion is detecting when there's not really motion. I'm gonna add uh, the low pass filter and see if that helps. Otherwise, I'll just switch from the microwave sensor to the regular PIR sensor. Well, I must admit defeat. This microwave motion sensor just does not play well with the ESP8266. I tried adding capacitors, resistors, and I still was getting false triggers. So, back to Old Faithful, my PIR sensor. You can see it just went to on when I waved my hand. I think that's going to be more reliable. Maybe someday I'll try and tackle that microwave sensor again. But on the bright side, everything else is working. This is a close-up of the resistor that you need to put between the output of the Dallas temperature sensor and 3.3 volts. The size isn't really important. Mine is a 4.7K, I think. I use hot glue to mount the touch sensors and the temperature sensor to a blank standard two-gang faceplate. And now, we're ready to install it. All right, this one over here is the fan. This one's the light. Yes, I am gonna turn the circuit breaker off. Flash on the camera actually works pretty well to light the workspace. these bundles of stuff. This looks like our neutrals. They're all white. This is going to be the hot wires in this one. And then for
from our switches. We're going to have one coming from the hot and one going out. So this one is, I can see it's the one that's going out. This one is bundled with all these hots, so I know which one's which. So I only need one hot, so I'm going to use this one as the hot wire. This one is the fan. Let's not mix that up. All right, cut the hot. Cut the fan. Okay, light. What I will do though is reuse one of these wires, take it off of the hot and send it put because I'm gonna need one coming from these bundle of neutrals. So this this leg is going up out of there. So that is the wire that goes to the light. This is the hot. I'm going to take one of these hot wires, I'm going to take this one. We're actually going to use it as a neutral. We're going to use it here. Strip a little bit off, not very much. These little terminals don't need a lot. Alright, and this one's the fan. This one's the light. Here's my BH Ono Free, and it's labeled very nicely on the 3D box. Neutral line, line one, line two. So we're gonna put neutral. I'm not crazy about these kinds of terminals. And then line, which is hot. And then I'm pretty sure I made the light switch one here. And the fan, and switch two. Now this is always the worst part, is getting all this back in there. Try and keep the pressure off of that connector. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That should work. One more thing to do, and that is figure out how I want this to come out of here. I don't exactly know what I want to do with this. Well, I think what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this, kind of dig out. It's in there quite nicely, actually. Very happy. Well, that's it. The BH Ono Free Solid State Relay version with ESP Home. I like it. Ever since the Shelly came out, there's been a lot of these small form factor dual relay switches, and I think they're fantastic. Sonoff has a mini version now. We've got the BH Ono Free, the Shelly 2.5. I saw one called Cansey. And there's even a company that wants to sell them already running Tasmoda. As soon as I can get my hands on one of each of these, I'll put it through the paces and tell you what I think. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.